Yo, what's up everyone? This is Man Like Devin. Welcome to the Reggae Pod Clash. It's a special episode today in uh, in several ways. The, the, the most important thing, the most special episode, I mean aspect of the episode, is that we have the great Errol Dunkley joining us today. Um, also, Roger, my co-host, Reggae Raj, Roger Revis, is not going to be joining me today. He is with Jason Mraz in San Diego on the Maranch. They're recording uh, some more some more music. They're putting out another reggae album and getting ready for some shows. Yes, shows seem to be slowly coming back. And so Roger is down there doing that. And so I am hosting the show myself today. But it uh, should be a really, a really nice convo with Errol Dunkley, who uh, will be joining us in just a bit. But before we get to Mr. Dunkley, uh, I want to read off... We, we, we start the show nowadays with the News of the Week segment, and this week, in lieu of the news, I really wanted to talk about another passing in the reggae world that happened this week, April 8th. The great DJ Trinity passed away at the age of 67 on April 8th, and Trinity really was one of the biggest DJs of the 70s. And of course, for anybody watching who might be unfamiliar with these terms, in Jamaica, they use the term DJ the way in America we would say MC, right? And what we call a DJ, the person who spins the records, in Jamaica they call it a selector, right? So Trinity was an MC, a DJ, and just really one of the biggest DJs of the 70s. He got his style super heavily influenced by big youth. And some of his, he was born Wade Brammer in 1954. He first started recording under the name Prince Glenn in about 74. And then um, him and his good friend Dillinger, the DJ, went to Channel One. And Jojo Hukim, one of the owners of Channel One and, and producer, told him, I don't like the name Prince Glenn. Let's look in the Bible and find you a different name. So he rechristened himself Trinity and had some huge songs. But he went to Joe Gibbs, and that's where he really had his biggest iconic hit he convinced joe gibbs who was reluctant to work with djs at that time to let him record over a cut of i'm still in love and he cut the iconic three-piece suit which dance hall fans all over the world know this they're probably more familiar with the athea and donna uh version which is uptown top ranking the original over that same rhythm is by trinity called three-piece suit it's it was a hit it's been a hit stays a hit um and then after that, he was really like the hottest DJ in Jamaica, and his style really went on to influence the way early 80s DJs sounded. And um, we lost him just a couple days ago. And so because Roger's not here, and so I get to play two records, the first record I want to play today is a tribute to Mr. Trinity. It's called Fire Down a Town. No, I was the first man going around to speak the truth. But yet, yet the people want to prosecute Me sound a huge but I'm a true Come to the fire, them a turn, them a bond on the tone Fire down the turn, them a run out of town Come to the fire down the turn Till they say the fire down the turn Some say that them need a roof over them head But yet them a bond down out Until you run out of town And them a run out of town Come to the fire down a town, them a run out a town Fire down a town, them a burn down town Fire down a town A man who's running in a August town In a mighty Congo field Man who's running in a August town In a mighty Congo field When I run up a street Boy, I'm a run from fire, me a till the last star Can the water not be the pure style Fire down a town Come to the fire down a town Come to sleep, seal, seal, fat. Oh, many man, they pump boards. May I tell you why? Come to sleep, seal, seal, fat. Oh, many man, they pump, they pump boards. Boy, I don't have drip from fire, fire down a tomb. No, fire down a tomb. Fire down a tomb. Just the other day, I'm at part two bridging And show them to them a black, them not to deal with no violence The man yam up them culture, yeah Fire down a town Come say fire down a town Just for what I man don't know But I'm here to tell you, know yourself Say the trade them, know themselves 
say the dread, them inside themselves. Be of yourself a boy, get kick off the shelf like a tin of milk. Yeah, fire down stones. Come to fire down stones. Come to fire down stones, them a run out of stones. Fire down stones, them a run out of stones. Fire for down stones, but them a run out of stones. Some man say me the house, some man say me the car, just to make violence, yeah? Yeah, some of them don't even have time to sit down and play the job. The Almighty, fire down a tone and all they make is fire. Fire down a tone, them a bone down tone. Fire down tone, them a run out of tone. Man, so that's the DJ Trinity who passed away. This week, April 8th, at the age of 67, that's a tune called Fire Down a Town. That's from the album Shanty Town Determination, hitter from start to finish. It was reissued by the Great Blood and Fire label um, some years ago. This is it, and it's got five bonus tracks on it. That is a tune called Fire Down a Town. It's all a Yabby U production, and that rhythm, excuse me, that, that rhythm is over a Johnny Clark. That's Johnny Clark's version of It's True by the Heptones. That's the original cut of that rhythm. Um, heavy, heavy, heavy. And Trinity, his influence was huge. And um, I just want to thank him for all the music and say rest easy. And now, for the Record of the Week segment to officially begin, I'm going to play my, my record. As I said, if you're joining us late, Roger Rivas is not with us today. It's just me, but we have the great Errol Thompson. Sorry, Errol Dunkley coming on. I'm looking at three different things. The great Errol Dunkley is joining us soon. But I want to play my record of the week. And this is a rarity, this one. It's labeled by an artist named Vincent March. It's called Don't Cry. But I have a strong suspicion that this is mislabeled, and this is not the name of the song. And it might not even be the name of the artist. Who knows? But we're going to listen to it and then talk about it on the flip side. This is supposedly Vincent March with Don't Cry. Why oi, why oi, why oi, why oi, say every dog must sit down on him own bottom. Say every dog must sit down on him own bottom. When jam on a pair, when jam on a pair. You run to the hills, it can help you. You run to the rocks, it can hide you. You run to the hills, it can help you. You run to the rocks, it can hide you. Is a light shout to jump on this day? Oh, guide I so Not the time to rock, my friend. Hold up your head and shout to Jamon. Yeah. Oh, guide our soul, niggas. Oh, oh, guide our You run to the hills, it can help you. You run to the rocks, it can hide you. You run to the hills, it can help you. You run to the rocks, it can hide you. Is the light shout to jump on this day? Oh, guide I so. When I'm on a pair, 
Yeah, that's a tune that's labeled as Don't Cry by Vincent March. And like I said, I don't I don't think that that is called Don't Cry because he never says Don't Cry in the tune. So I, I have a feeling that it's just completely mislabeled. But regardless, it's on the flip side of Freddie McGregor's Roman Soldier's 10-inch, which I've shown on the show before. And by the way, you can't see me right now because uh, with Roger and I here, the way this platform works... If there's not two of us, it doesn't like let me show up in this slide, but you'll, you'll see me soon when we bring on Mr. Errol Dunkley. But you can hear me. And so this, this tune is 1983. It's a hit-bound 10-inch single out of Channel One. It's a beautiful tune. The lyrics are, Every dog must sit down on his own bottom when John might appear. And he never says, Don't cry in it. So that's what makes me think it's not. It's, that, that's, it's mislabeled. But it's just a beautiful, one of those one-off tunes that we talk about all the time on the show that... You know, and we had Freddie McGregor on the show a few months ago, and this is, you know, the flip side of his Roman Soldiers 10-inch, and I wish I had asked him about this. I I asked him about the song Roman Soldiers, but I didn't think to ask him about the flip side, and I should have, because I've always wanted to know about this artist. It's such a beautiful song. The rhythm is heavy. Roots Radix, that kind of like the snare only comes in at the end. It's like the, the kick is like on the one, two and three. And then the snare hits on the four, you know, it's a unique drum beat, beautiful melody. It's got that channel one Radix sound and it's 1983. So, I mean, pretty soon after that, the sound started to get more sophisticated and clean. And that's really one of the last years where, where the Radix and channel one really sounded that way. So, I mean, that's just a beautiful tune for me. If I ever learn more about it, or if anybody listening, as is probably the case, knows more about that song than I do, please let me know. But that is, uh, I'll show you my copy here. See, this is Channel One, Hip Bound 10-inch. It says, Don't Cry by Vincent March. The flip side is Roman Soldiers by Freddie McGregor. And when we had Freddie on the show, he told us about this, that that's Dennis Brown playing bass on his, on his side of that record. I wonder if he's on both sides. Who knows? Who knows? But that's uh, the record of the week segment. Vincent March, Don't Cry. And as always, our record of the week segment is brought to you by the Root Fire Reggae Pod Clash merchandise store. You can head to rootfire.net and click on the shop tab, the store tab, and pick up your Reggae Pod Clash gear. You can get a hoodie, a mug, a hat beanies shirts all kinds of nice stuff all the proceeds go right to supporting the upkeep of the show it's a non-profit show but we do have some expenses and so every time you order merch it really helps us keep this show running so we appreciate that and before we bring our special guest on i want to mention real quick as always we are doing a giveaway and this week courtesy of vp records big up vp we are giving away the total reggae box set cd this is a 14 disc cd box set 14 CDs, and they're all thematically labeled. So there's like um, uh, a CD full of number ones, a CD full of classic roots. There's one called Gangsta for Life. It's like newish dance hall. There's one called Natural High that's all ganja tunes. There's a ska CD. There's a dub CD. There's one that's uh, full of green sleeves, rhythm-driven songs. So if you want to get this, it, like I, m my copy that VP hooked me up with. I got to say big up Carter and big up VP. I don't even want to open it because it's like, it's just so cool. It looks like it's just awesome the way it is. I know you guys want to win this. So you can go in the description in YouTube of the YouTube channel here and you'll find the link to enter. And I think you can enter by this Friday, but you might even have longer, but don't wait, go enter because, um, it's a, it's a heavy, heavy box set in more than one ways. So go do that. And now without any further ado, I want to bring on our special guest, one of the great voices in Jamaican music who has been recording since the 60s some of the greatest rocksteady reggae tunes that have ever come out of Jamaica. 
His voice is synonymous with reggae music and rocksteady music and Jamaican music. Please welcome to the Reggae Pod Clash, Mr. Errol Dunkley. Yes. Yeah, greetings. So nice yeah. to have you. Thanks for joining yeah. us. <laughs> nice to be here. <laughs> All right, we nice got it working. I want to say greetings to everyone who is listening. It's a pleasure to be on your show, man. It's, it's really a pleasure to have you. It's an honor to talk Thanks. to you. Um, so you're in, you're in Jamaica, which is uh, still under, under curfew, right? Right. <laughs> until, until 8 o'clock tonight. Mm. Yeah, so, then from, um, from Friday, we closed down again for three days. So what does that yeah, mean? You can't, Saturday, you can't, you can't leave the Sunday house? And Monday. So you just right. can't leave the house at that time? Or what does that mean? How does that work? Yeah, no, you can't leave, man. <laughs> wow. So you got to just have you all have your groceries. To, yeah, you have to stay in for three days. That's intense. Saturday, um, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Wow. So, that, that's yeah, intense. So, so we, are only, oh, we are only open up till tomorrow. Then... After tomorrow, it's locked down again, bro. <laughs> Man, and then no exceptions, huh? You can't leave to go get food or anything like that. No, you make sure you get your food from Thursday. <laughs> wow. How long has that been in effect? Well, we've gone two weeks now. The third wow. week coming up. And it's just going to last. We used to close that like from... Like from... Um, Six o'clock, all business place after close. Eight o'clock, you're not supposed to be seen on the street as the, the cops then pick you up and charge you some big money. Wow. You know, so you have to be indoors. But, but um, Friday, Saturday and Sunday... Not no place is open, man. No time of the day. Wow, that's well, that's a stricter lockdown than here. People, people are out and about around here, but maybe they shouldn't be. So, I want to talk to you. I mean, we've got Errol Dunkley on the show. We got to get into the music. Uh, I wanted to talk to you about your start and and your childhood, and and what kind of musical environment and experiences were there for you as a child. Yeah, well, as a child, I started out recording when I was 11 years old for Prince Buster. But I never had any success with Prince Buster until I started singing for um, Joe Gibbs and the amalgamated label. I had my first hit song when I was like 14, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I had, other, I, I, I had three, three number one songs in Jamaica at the time. 1965, 64, 65, 66. You know? I, that was all with I've Joe been Gibbs. active. Yeah. I, I, but I, I record for other people like um, Rupi Edwards, Sonia Pattinger, right. Cox and Downbeat, um, Drew Creed of Treasure Isle, right. Bunny Lee. Bonnie Lee, I, I record for a lot of artists, but I record for myself as well because Gregory and I, we, we formed the African Museum label. Right. Which, which was, yeah, our label because um, the, pro, the producers, them, wasn't treating us good. So we decided we were going to do our own thing. So... That's what that's when we started the African Museum label. And I I, I um record myself, license license songs to people like Rupi Edwards, Sonia Pattinger, and other independent um producers, you know what I mean? Right. So we were always in the business doing our own thing, even though we are recording other producers you know right and mm -hmm. and when you and when you when you got started before you were having those hits i know i know you you did um a duet with roy shirley right 
No, I've never sang with Roy Shirley. Oh, they no? put that oh. in the in the um, record book of history, but I always have to correct that. I never did any song with Roy Shirley. Roy okay. Shirley and I used to sing for same project, but we never, we never compiled, you know. I got it. Okay. Well, I'm glad you corrected that. Yeah. Song that we, we, we did together. Yeah. I'm glad. I'm glad you set that straight because I I had always re read that before, so that's that's good to know. So, yeah, so Prince, me, me too, me too. But that that's wrong, in right. the reggae um, history book. That's not how it goes, man. Mm -hmm. So so Prince Buster mm -hmm. was the was the first producer you you recorded for then. That's right. I was a right. kid. Right. And were you at that time when you were a kid? I mean, before you even started recording, I mean, were you were you writing songs uh, as well as singing? Sure, yeah, yeah. I was going to school and writing songs, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, get myself involved because I always loved to sing when I was a kid. Every 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 um, American song that play on the radio. I used to know it just like that. Just listening it twice and I know the song. You know? Nice. I used to be quick like that. <laughs> <laughs> but then I, I I wrote a lot of songs. You know, but I I I, I was cheated out of my, my royalties by Joe Gibbs. Because mm -hmm. I, I um I had an album with Joe Gibbs. And he registered my songs, said saying that he wrote my songs, you know what I mean? And that's that that was false. That's unfortunately yeah, the story. Because you we... see... huh? Go on, go on. What are you saying? Oh, I was just saying that's yeah, unfortunately the story that we hear so often. It's such it's that, that, that would happen to so many artists. Yeah, you know. But uh, you see, um, Joe Gibbs, he, he was such a, a cheater, you know, because they, they ran him out of the music business, out of the industry, because um, he had um, J.C. J. Lodge done over um, a Charlie Pride song, and he registered it that he's the writer, and they, they sued him. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And he couldn't do no more recording business. He had to leave the leave the thing alone, you know. They run him out of it. Wow. Sue him, you know. <laughs> so it was experiences like that that made you and, and Gregory just say, like, we need to start our own our own label. Mm-hmm. And yeah, how did when you... we start our when we start our own label, that was a, a better um, move for us, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because yeah. he was the youngest producer. <laughs> right. And were you producing other artists at that time besides besides just doing your own tunes? No, I produced other artists as well, but I was never benefit benefited from... <laughs> Producing other artists, cause Gregory and I, we started people like Big Youth. We first took Big Youth to the studio, wow, and recorded him. Yeah, and um, Gussie Clark. Uh, we introduced him to the business. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And the first two songs that he he, he um released was two rhythm track. I gave him, you know, one of them he put um, URI on it called the Eye of the Mountain. Mm -hmm. And the next one with Big Youth called uh, um, Mr. Tipper. Yeah. Tipper to one sound because yeah. Big Youth was the DJ on that sound. He did the song called Mr. Tipper Make Your Rock. So. Right. And the, the, the first album that Gussie Clark of Anchor Record, you know, right? Mm-hmm, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, I was the one who 
who produced that album, but he, he didn't give me no credit, you know what I mean? Right. I bring him in the business. Yeah. Um, um, our, our, our BSA, Robbie Shakespeare. Yes. I first took him to the studio. Really? And we did a song called you, You'll Never Know. That's the first song he has ever done. Wow. What year was that? That was in um, 1971. Wow. 72, somewhere around there. And um, Robbie, Robbie Shakespeare, um, we used to work with, with Robbie and his, his, and his brother and Glenn Adams and Reggie. Mm -hmm. These musicians were our musicians before Bob Marley wrote them in and called them Wayers. Right. Yeah. Uh, family man and his brother all of us been recording them because they were like studio musicians every 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 producer that used them gave them a different name if right. they work for lee perry if they work for lee perry they're called upsetters they work for bunny lee they're called um Aggravators. Right. They work they work for me and Gregory. We, they they're called um African Museum All Star. Yeah. They were they were just special musicians. And when they work for uh till, till Jimmy back. Jimmy Radway, right? And they were the Femi Time All Stars? Yeah. Right. Yeah, because Jimmy was the one that I did um Black Cinderella for. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I want to. So, I want to ask you about that. Every, about that. Every producer. Go ahead. Mm. I say every producer they they work for, give them a different name. Right. Success all star. That's Ruby Edwards. Ruby Edwards. At the time, you know what I mean. So they were like studio musicians until Bob. Bring them together and call them wheelers. Right. So well, we've, been, we've been working with them long before Bob. I wanted to ask you about working with with the Barrett brothers and Reggie and Reggie uh, specifically in in the context of Jimmy Radway and the Fimi Time All Stars because that to me that 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 congregation of of you doing tunes like Black Cinderella and and probably my favorite uh, Errol Dunkley song which is Keep the Pressure Down. And working with Jimmy Radway, yeah. and and then the the Fimi Time All Stars just had this sound at that time, and I feel like that era, that combination doesn't get enough credit. Like a lot of people don't even know who Jimmy Radway is, you know. And I wanted to ask you about those true, sessions. True. You know, I wanted to ask you about what those sessions were like recording "Keep the Pressure Down" and "Black Cinderella," and working with with all those amazing musicians at that time. Yeah, well. Um, Jimmy, Jimmy never um, stick one set of musicians, you know, um, like Cinderella was recorded by the Barrett brother, brothers. It was mm -hmm. like um, different musicians, like uh, some of them musicians, I can't even remember the names, but um, they were mostly... Um, Treasure Isle musicians. Yeah. Was so were, so really it was Treasure Isle musician. So it, you're, it wasn't the Barrett brothers on Black Cinderella then. No. no. Wow. It was <laughs> um Treasure Isle musicians. I can't remember some of them name now, like Ox Brown, Winston Brown. Wright, and keyboard. Um, Jackie Jacks, non BS. Mm -hmm. So that's like Finn Sound Dimension Crew. Um, no, more um, Treasure Isle. Okay. But these these were the musicians that was working at Treasure Isle with people like Alton and John Walt. Right. And other artists as well, like um, 
Ethiopians, mm -hmm. them. Uh, these were musicians that play Black Cinderella, but true like movie star, you'll never know. You're gonna need me. You're gonna need me was um was friend musicians, cause the Barrett brother never came round at that time yet. You know, right. it was um. Uh, other opposite. musicians that Joe Gibbs used to use. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, so. But for for, for Jimmy Radway, when you did okay. um, when you did the tune "Keep the Pressure Down," was that was that the Barrett mm -hmm. Brothers on that one? No, no, it was That's um it. those musicians I told you about oh, Jackie ones, Jackson okay. and Bill, Got you. Fox Brown and guitar. Winston written keyboard. Winston is gone now still, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah. But, Hux Brown too. Yeah. These are the musicians. Yeah. These are the musicians that we used to work with at the time. Because I, I I have other have album that I recorded in England. Um called um Sit and Cry. Mm -hmm. Those were the musicians. I um uh, direct import to come to England and we did the album in England. Sit and cry. I don't know if you ever hear that album before. What year was that? That was like a uh, that was like seventy three, seventy four. Okay, yeah. 74, 75, those times, when I first went to England. And were you living in England at that time, or were mm. you coming back and forth a lot? No, I was li living in England, but I always come back and forth. Because mm. um, I always come home and do recording. Channel One. And some other studio because um, I came home and I did a old OK Fred album, right? Which I licensed to um, Shelly Record, and it was later um, licensed by um, Warner Brothers that took it in the British chart, right? And I I did license it to a French company that took it. To number one in the French chart, you know, and that's that, that, that's my biggest song up to now, up to date. Right. It it always amazes me how clean that sound it, that song is when you listen to it. The recording quality, it just sounds like way way cleaner than a lot of the stuff happening at that time. It's always like really impressive when you hear it. That's right. Yeah, it was Sly and Robbie. Hmm. Yeah, we we record at. Um, at Channel One. Mm. And what what year did you record OK Fred? Yeah, a lot of work. OK Fred was um uh, seven, 70, 76 I recorded it in Jamaica and it went into the British chart seventy eight. Wow. So it was a little lag. Well, yeah, for '76, mm -hmm. man, that 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 tune just for being recorded in '76, it's just got it's just such a high quality on the recording. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Cause those time we were um, creating and inventing, you know. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> that's that's why it had those quality in it. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well. Another song I wanted to ask you about was a tune you did for Coxon called Way Down Low. And that's that's always oh. just one one of the heaviest tunes to me. I mean, it's just heavy like just roots. That that tune is just like it's it's so it's it sounds so much like Studio One, you know, you just the second you hear it and then your voice on it and the lyrics and everything. So, anything you remember about that session or writing that tune, I would love to hear. Well, well, that song was written by um, Prince Allah. 
Oh, really? Yeah, it was written by Prince Allah, but then Cox requests me singing it, you know? <laughs> wow. That's yeah, a heavy tune. Cox do you requested it, but do you remember yeah. what the, what do you have any memories of that session and what like who who the musician musicians were on it? Yeah, they they they, they were um Jackie Mitu, Leroy Sibbles, and bass, Jackie and and piano, Ox Brown and guitar. Um. We, so much musicians, most of them passed off now. Right. Most of them passed away now. You know? But it was Studio One. Studio One outfit. Right. And did you have a better experience with Coxon than you did with, with Joe Gibbs? No, no. No. But I tell you, um, Coxon, Coxon is a teacher, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and right. a lot of things from Mr. Dad at Studio One, you know. But it was the same. All right, we're going to... Uh, we're going to charge the phone real quick? All right. Well, that's uh, we're yeah, talking to I'm Mr. gonna put the charger in now. Okay, cool. Do your thing. We're talking to Mr. Errol Dunkley. If you're just joining us live, he's uh, he's at his home in, in Jamaica where there is a curfew. Um, and so gotta stay, gotta stay in and, and do, do the interviews from home. But we're very happy to, to have him. Oh, and looks like we lost him. He, he he'll probably come back in. Um, this is the uh, these are the challenges of uh, being in in different spots when we do these interviews. Um, but really interesting because he was saying right now that um, on the on the Femi Time All Stars recordings that uh, it wasn't the Barrett brothers because all the all the Jimmy Radway like this album that Pressure Sounds put out it lists the musicians for everything as Carlton Barrett, Family Man Barrett, Reggie Lewis, Tyrone Downey. And he's he's uh, Errol's being pretty adamant that uh, it was not those musicians, but it was uh, more of the musicians that recorded at Treasure Isle. He was saying Hux Brown um, and and others. So that's interesting because uh, I had always read read otherwise, um, but he was there, so so he knows. Um, hopefully, Errol will get back on with us here soon. Um, you know, because there's a curfew in Jamaica, he's having to do the interview from home on his phone rather than in a studio. So uh, sometimes that causes these technical difficulties. But uh, thanks to everybody who's joining in um, right now. He'll be back on uh, 808 Hawaii Vibes. What's up? He says, saw Errol at Dub Club. I'm going to ask him about Created by the Father Father and Little Way Different for sure. Um, but I appreciate the good words. What up, Nate? Our good friend, Nate Feinstein from uh, Ayaterra in the comments um yeah big up everyone uh errol's having a little bit of technical difficulties but i think he'll come back on here in just a second gonna give him a few minutes uh while we're waiting i want to remind everybody that you can get your reggae podclash merchandise at the podclash merchandise store rootfire.net there's some cool stuff up there i'm always wearing my hoodie and i'm always drinking out of my reggae podclash mug check it out um and if you're just joining us and wondering where my co-host Roger is, Roger is down in San Diego with uh, the one and only Jason Mraz recording some new tunes for his new upcoming, um, his new upcoming reggae album. Of course, we had Jason on earlier in the year in 2020 to talk about what was then his brand new record, which was all reggae, killer musicians on it, John Asher and Cheeky's Lasoya from The Expanders, Roger Revis on keys, Stephen Suckery on uh, on guitar from New Kingston, and he's got um, a lot of those same people from that crew down there recording with him now. Uh, maybe I'm not even supposed to be saying this, but guess what? When you leave me alone to do an interview by myself, these are the kind of things that I'm going to talk about. 808 Hawaii Vibes says, why do you think the musicians are different on the record sleeve? Um... I don't know. I don't know. It could be that Errol is maybe remembering a different session than what we're talking about. Um, it's always hard to tell. This, these things are a long time ago, you know, or maybe uh, 
you know, maybe maybe the mistake really is just on the sleeve. Um, let's see. So if you're just tuning in, uh, Errol's having some technical difficulties. We were talking, and then he had to charge his phone, and it dropped the call. I, I'm pretty sure he's going to call back in here, so we're going to give him uh, a little more time. Um, Javier says, my future lies ahead of me. Would that be his first recording? Um, I will ask him. He, def he said he did his first recordings for uh, Prince Buster, but he already corrected me on some, uh, some misinformation that's out there because I had always read that his start in music was a duet with the great Roy Shirley, and uh, he said, no, that is not true. He's read that as well, but that, um, that is not the case. So it's good to set the record straight about that. It's one of the reasons why we love having this show because, you know, you read all kinds of stuff and, and information gets uh, collected and, and posted and, and, and taken as gospel, but uh, nothing like talking to the artists to really tell you. And it's just, you know, it's saddening to hear the same story over and over about all these artists just getting really screwed over by the producers. And, uh, you know, names like Joe Gibbs and Coxon um, that are revered uh, by us music fans, and rightly so, um, but there's so many sides to that story, you know, and unfortunately the uh, the money was not always paid the way it should have been, and uh, artist after artist talks about it. And it's interesting because whenever anyone that we've talked to who, who recorded at Studio One brings up Coxon, it's always like the same thing. It's like, yeah, you know didn't pay me what he owed me but man he was a teacher and I learned so much from him and it's really interesting that that's kind of been like there's almost been a sentiment of like forgiveness of like yeah well what are you gonna do it was Coxon so it, I it's it's interesting to hear that from yet an, another artist like Errol so if you're just joining us um Errol's having some tech technical difficulties and let's see I'm getting a text from him right now um yeah he's signing back in so uh we'll have him back on here in just a second hang tight um, these are the these are the difficulties you encounter sometimes when you're in different parts of the world. Uh, he'll be back in, but you know if you have any questions to ask Mr. Dunkley, just put them in the comments here, and as soon as he's on, I will be sure to ask him um, about it. I've got a bunch more questions to talk to him about. Um, I didn't know until doing research for this interview that he started African the African Museum label with Gregory Isaacs. Um, I've, I, of course, have already, I've always known about African Museum because they've, Gregory Isaacs uh, released so many great tunes on that label, and I knew it was Gregory's. Um, Neil says, tell him to turn a light on if possible. Yeah, the thing is, when we, in the little sound check, when we had him go in the room with the light, uh, it was too far away from the modem. So I think it just kind of is what it is for this interview. Um, because of the curfew in Jamaica, he didn't want to go to a studio and do it, and so he's at his house with his, with his phone on his WhatsApp rather than being in a studio with a professional camera and all that stuff. So, you know, um, we'll have to bear with the technical difficulties and the, uh, the low light um, in exchange for getting some of these stories firsthand from Errol. Um, we did try to sit him in a... Here we go. Here we go. All right. Yeah, I'm back. All right. <laughs> I can hear you. There you go. Now I can see you. All right. Yeah. All right. Round two. Round two. <laughs> um, somebody, there's some, been some questions that people have been asking while you were getting your, your phone hooked back in. And one of them is about uh, Javier Roa wants to know if the tune My Future Lies Ahead of Me would be your first recording. No, no, that wasn't my first recording. Oh, gosh. Oh, you know that song, man. <laughs> A lot of people don't know that song. That song was um, written by Prince Buster. Yeah, mm -hmm. when I was like 11, 12 years old. You know? Mm-hmm. He wrote that song, and I I, I, I did it. <laughs> so that wasn't the first, but that was near the start, probably, right? Yeah, that was like um, my third song. Wow. Okay, there you yeah, go. Yeah, long, so... long, bef long before pe songs like um, You're Gonna Need Me, Right. Please Stop Your Lying Girl, I'm Going Home, You'll Never Know. That song was before all of these songs. Okay, Fred, all of them. Right. And mm -hmm. did did songs like that, um, even, you know, but these early, early ones we're talking about, 
did they get and you know when you were when you were so young did they get played in the in the dance hall at all did sound systems play those songs oh looks like he froze again um let's see hopefully it's not me that's frozen is everybody still uh seeing the feed yeah okay okay he's frozen um yeah you know well while we're waiting um i will tell everybody that we are uh switching at the end of may we are switching to a pre-recorded format for the reggae pod clash um because um of stuff like this uh it's hard to uh okay we lost him well you know we might have lost him for the for uh we'll, i'll give him one more chance to come back in um see if they can fix the the technical difficulties but if not like i was saying we're going to be switching to a uh pre-recorded format um because until we can really get to doing interviews in person um it's you know, you encounter situations like this, especially with artists in Jamaica who are on lockdown because of COVID. And so it's hard for them to get to studios. And so a lot of times if they're doing it in their house with bad reception, then you get issues like this. Um, and it's just, you know, it doesn't make for a great listening experience. So um, I will tell everybody that two weeks from today, we have Soul Syndicate on the show, which I'm stoked about. Uh, we have the great Tony Chin and one of, if not both of, Santa Davis and Fully Fullwood. Two of those three artists will be joining us for sure. Uh, that's next. That's two Wednesdays from now, the 28th. And then two Wednesdays after that for our final Wednesday night episode, we're going to have the great Winston Jarrett, which I'm super stoked on. I got the chance to play in Winston Jarrett's band with the Expanders long ago. He's a great guy, one of the great, uh, just great figures in Jamaican music. And so we're going to have him on. And then after that, we're going to switch to a pre-recorded format. We might still go live and do it, but it'll be kind of like at just whatever times we can. Um, I think we'll still go live to give to give everyone a chance to do the live commenting. But that's evolving. But I just want to tell everybody that's one of the things we're, we're going to do just really in an effort to improve the show because it's, um, you know, it's disappointing when when you get an artist of, of, the, of the caliber of a of an Errol Dunkley and then, you know, things like the timing because the show's at night and he couldn't have got, he couldn't get to a studio because of the lockdown causes the reception. Hey, let's see. Let's try it again. Mr. Dunkley's back in. All right. Sorry about that, Ben. That, that's okay. It's the way huh? it goes sometimes. That's the way it goes sometimes. No worries. Thanks for keep, for, to keep trying. <laughs> Yeah. yeah but um let's see oh okay well that's just uh that looks like it's just gonna the way it's gonna be so as we are going to switch to these uh, to a different format that will be more conducive to getting better quality out of um, more artists, we will definitely have Ariel back on uh, sometime over the summer. And he, I, I want to tell everybody that he has a new album coming out April 30th. It's called Cool Runnings. He sent it to me. I listened to it. It's really, really good. As only you know, you wouldn't expect anything else from Ariel, but you know. I have to admit that sometimes uh, with, with really like classic artists, I might be like skeptical of what their new re recordings are going to sound like sometimes. And man, don't worry about this one. It sounds great. I uh, can't wait for everyone to hear it. It's called Cool Runnings. It's out April 30th. Um, I even have the uh, artwork here. I don't even know if I'm supposed to show it, but I'm going to show it anyway. Here it is. Uh, cool Runnings by Errol Dunkley coming soon, April 30th on all the uh, proper platforms. It sounds great. It's recorded really nicely. Um, so I think we're going to uh, call it a wrap for tonight. Um, I will talk to Errol's manager and we will uh, reschedule a show with him where we can do it with proper quality and all that and get Roger on here and, and, and do it right. Um, thank you everyone for tuning in. We will be back on April 28th with Soul Syndicate, Tony Chin, Santa Davis, Fully Fullwood, two of the three, two of them, two of those three will be on with us for sure. Uh, but until then, everybody remember to go subscribe to the podcast. And we will see everybody very soon.